In this section, we're going to take a look at composition of functions. Uh, to start our study of it, we're going to take a look at this example here. It says that the number of bacteria in a refrigerated food product is given by this function that depends on capital T, where capital T is the temperature of the food in degrees Celsius. When the food is removed from the refrigerator, uh, the temperature of the food is approximated, uh, approximated by uh, this equation here, where little t is how much time in hours the food has been set out. So in part A, it asks how many bacteria are in the food after it has been set out for two hours. Well, we know that the number of bacteria depend upon temperature, and we know that then temperature depends on how long it's been set out. So we can start with this idea that this two hours, right, is referring to this little t, little t equals two. And so we know that we can figure out what the temperature of that food is if we plug two in for small t in this equation right here. So when I do that, I get 7 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's been out of the refrigerator for two hours. It's now 7 degrees Celsius. And then we can take that. Now that we know what the temperature is, I can then put that 7 into the number of bacteria function. and compute how many bacteria there should be based on that being the temperature of the food. And so the answer that we get there is 636 bacteria. Okay, so, uh, so here's our answer for this question, but let's kind of analyze what it is that we've just done here. Right? This 7 that we were plugging in for the temperature everywhere, remember that this came from the function t of 2, right? So we have really t of 2 plugged in. All right, let me erase that stray mark that just got made there. So we really have t of 2 plugged in everywhere. Uh, where we saw the 7. So the way to think of this process is that we really had two functions involved and this temperature function was nested within the number of bacteria function. So then this allows us to take a look at a question more like this one here in part B that says write a function that gives the number of bacteria as a function of the time directly. Okay, so instead of having to take our time of two hours, figure out the temperature, and then plug that temperature of seven degrees into the function for, for the number of bacteria, basically a two-step process, can we do that all as just one step? All right, so um, what we can do is we can say, all right, well, if I was just going to plug the temperature that I got from time into the function for n anyway, how about we just do it at the very beginning before we plug any numbers in. So what I can do is say, all right, I have this temperature function. How about I place that temperature function everywhere where I see temperature up here? So I can say 9, but it'll be the temperature function squared minus 15 times the temperature function plus 300. But that temperature function, we know what that is. That's 2t plus 3. So this becomes 9 times 2t plus 3 squared minus 15 times 2t plus 3 plus 300. And of course here we're going to have to FOIL, so let's just go ahead and write that out, 2t plus 3 times itself. 
and then we can go ahead and distribute this negative 15 through to both terms I think so negative 30t minus 45 plus 300 and so let's go ahead and move this over here to make a little bit more room so we have our function for the number of bacteria as a function of time is going to be well we'll have nine times the result of foiling and when I foil these down here first outside inside last I should get 4t squared plus 12t when I add the outside and inside plus 9 for the last and then I have minus 30t and I can simplify negative uh, 45 plus 300 so that's going to be plus 255 and then of course I can distribute my 9 through so this is 36t squared plus 108t uh, plus 81 minus 30t plus oops sorry about that plus 255 all right so 36t squared I can combine my t terms so subtract 30 from that and I get 78 T and then 81 plus 255 gives me 336. So I now have a function for the number of bacteria directly as a function of time. So you give me any time now and I can plug that in directly to this equation. And you can check our work from the last problem if I go ahead and I put in 2 in for this and for t in this function and you do that computation you do in fact get our answer from the from the previous one which is uh, 636 So generally, this idea that you saw in that introductory example is what we call composition of functions. And the way to think of it is it literally means that you are taking the output of one function and it's becoming the input for another function. I think the most useful uh, thing that I can draw to help, help us conceptualize this is if I take this idea of f of g of x. First of all, notationally, sometimes it's written like this, f of g of x, or you actually stick the g inside the input for f. Um, the way that this could be understood is that it is a new function. And this new function within it has kind of two stages. The first stage is the function g. And the second stage is the function f. So I've used the analogy that, uh, of functions being machines, essentially. And so think of this just as a machine that has two different components within it that come together to make the, the larger machine. So the idea here is I'm going to send x values in here, but then those x values come out as outputs for G but then you're sending those outputs into F and so then it's coming out as F of G of X okay and I think that you'll find this diagram really helpful when we are trying to think through the idea of compositions in various ways so let's take a look at one more example in this video so we've got two functions here, and it wants us to, first of all, evaluate f, g of f of 3. All right, so as we're doing this, um, first of all, we know what to do with f of 3, right? f of 3 tells me to plug 3 in for x right here. So 
on the one hand I can note that f of 3 is 2 times 3 minus 1 which gives me 5 so when I say g of f of 3 what I really mean is g of 5 but then of course I know what to do with that right the function up here tells me to take that input of 5 square it and subtract 2 and of course that's 25 minus 2 which is 23 alright and if I do f of g of 3 right I can figure out what g of 3 is g of 3 is taking 3, squaring it, and subtracting 2, which is 9 minus 2, which is 7. So that means that f of g of 3 is equal to f of 7. But then f tells me to take my 7, times it by 2, and subtract 1. So that, of course, gives me 13. Now when we look at C and D, uh, this one asks us to simply write a simplified version of this composition of functions. All right, Much like we wrote a simplified version of our number of bacteria function as a function of time, now we're going to write a simplified version of this composition. So let's think about here, what does G typically want us to do? Well, it wants us to take the input and square it then subtract 2 but this time my input is not x it is f of x so I'm going to take f of x I'm gonna square it and I'm gonna subtract 2 but of course we know what f of x looks like f of x is 2x minus 1 and just for the sake of space here uh, let me go ahead and write out the FOIL process up here. So when I square 2x minus 1, I get 4x squared. Negative 2x minus 2x plus 1. So down here, I can replace this with 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 2 but of course these are like terms that will combine so what we have is that our composition of functions g of f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 4x minus 1 alright and we can do the same thing for f of g of x right so what does f do it takes its input it multiplies it by 2 and subtracts 1. But our input now is the function g. So we'll say 2 times g of x minus 1. But g of x is x squared minus 2. So this is 2 times x squared minus 2. And so now to simplify, we just distribute. So we get 2x squared minus 5. And that is our simplified function f of g of x.